Great. If you are joining in with us for the first time today, um, this is Coach Anton from Coach Anton P2R Limited and also on our Coach Anton channel here on YouTube. I'm um, presenting this obviously from a live session in our Zoom live sessions. So note there will be some Q&A session right at the end of it as well. If you wish to be part of that, please get in touch with us so that we can indeed get you part of these sessions as well. You can use our cell phone number also on WhatsApp. All right. So this is part of a series on sports mental coaching in sports and how to use that in sports. Now, we're basically taking a deeper look into how to use and benefit from, not just apply sports mental coaching, which is a very important part, of course. All right. Now, in the topics we've got covered here, um, we, we're basically covering five different topics over six different videos that will follow. Uh, this is already the fourth one as we go on. We basically had the first one here, sports mental coaching for individual player management. And then we've had sports mental coaching for team management and sports mental coaching in youth development. Those three has already been loaded on videos as well and individual presentations on them. If you wish to have a look at them, please go back to our previous videos. Then sports mental coaching for the technical team, which is coaching the coach. That's the topic we'll be covering today. And then our next topic will be on the vicious cycle of frustration and how to solve it. That specific topic we'll be covering over two videos um, for the simple reason that we'll be focusing on what it is and then the next one on the actual solution on how to prevent it. Right, sports mental coaching for the technical team. Understanding the influence on team dynamics is a very important part. Now, when we're basically working with the technical team, we make sure that they are aware of what's important for them and their influence on the actual team and uh, how they can utilize things also to the benefit of the team. So firstly, we want them to understand their influence on team dynamics. So they don't just think that a team gets built on its own, um, which I believe most coaches don't think that, but they also understand how they can actually use the influence better to improve the actual team spirit or team aspects in, in a specific team as well. I've had many cases where you have different coaching styles out there, of course, but many cases where people are very military and they get involved in a country where this may be um, a culture where that wouldn't go down very well. Uh, I know in South Africa, that is definitely one of those countries where that would be a problem. And then they struggle to adjust here and they don't get very good response from the players either. However, um, if you, for example, play a father figure, in many cases here in the culture we face this side, that would have been a much better you know, option as a coach. And uh, the, the players will respond a lot better to you as well. At the same time, your influence is crucial to the team being positive, negative, or alternatively to the team simply not responding very well to what you're trying to present them. So that's very important to consider. And then you're looking at the next one being understanding the role in team building. Now, when it comes to team building, this is something that must be planned. It's not something that just happens. So it can happen coincidentally, but I definitely refer to those as despite of not because of when that occurs. Um, that normally takes a lot longer. But if you intentionally focus on doing team building sessions, um, you'll be able to involve your players a lot. Um, but understand that your role is mostly to coordinate that, but to also be part of that. If your players feel that they can't approach you about something, <laughs> you might find yourself clashing later on, especially at senior level where there's bigger egos out there that you might struggle to deal with. Um, you definitely want to make sure that, that you have a relationship where players feel like they can come and speak with you. Otherwise, they're going to end up challenging you in public. And that's the last thing you need as a coach. And for team building's sake, that's very important to understand as well. So take note of that. And that comes back to our communication skills as well. So communication skills as, uh, as a coach is way beyond just the verbal out there. But remember that the tone of how you say things are important and how and what you say are important, what you perceive out there are also very important. I've seen coaches speaking to a player who don't look in their eyes. In the South African context, I'm going to put it here, we've got some cultures where the following is important. So the, the, the coach gets here, he's used to a culture where looking in the eyes is showing respect. Speaking to a player whose culture says, if I look in the eyes, I'm challenging you, 
if I look down when you speak to me, I'm showing you respect. Now, if you in that incident, for example, come and tell a player, look in my eyes when I speak to you, you actually subconsciously communicating to the player, <laughs> disrespect me when I speak to you. And you don't want to do that. It's the last thing you want to do. So it's crucial for you to have good communication skills out there. It's beyond just knowing how to communicate according to one culture, but starting to understand the culture you're in as well, and then trying to configure a way that actually makes sense for that specific club scenario. Keep that in mind. Um, familiarize yourself with the cultures of your players in a team, because even if you're in Europe, for example, you could have a player who comes from here who has the other culture that he came from and um, might not be showing disrespect to you and you might actually misinterpret it. Instead, rather teach him the culture from that side calmly and patiently considering where he came from as well not considering that he not not assuming that he is basically disrespecting you which is very important when you look at that then you've got realistic goal setting now this is this is something i'm very focused on so when it comes to goal setting, you can, you can set goals out there that can actually discourage your team because they could be too hard to attain or they could bore your team because they're too easy to, to achieve. And the last thing you want is to have goals out there that, that don't motivate your team. Realistic goals are very important and, and making sure you've got short, mid and long term goals and then also your immediate actions within each of those goals um, that you need to base, basically be following as a team. You as a leader of the team, as a coach of the team, and or as the technical team of the, of the actual team, you are responsible for making this happen and be put to together constructively. Right, then you're basically looking at your next one here, which is understanding when to use what type of psycho psychological methods for individual and team. Now, I've covered a lot in the previous videos as well. If you've not seen them, I recommend you're going to have a look at them as well. I'm going to briefly touch on some of them. So understanding when to use what type of psychological methods are rather important in the sense that I can't expect a player to go do a visualization of the full match while he's in the field. Now, that's a typical example. But if you really don't know any of that, you might find yourself in, in a problem trying to do that. At that stage, it needs to be in the real world. However, in terms of visualization, it can still be used in the match in the form of maybe a set piece or free kick is being taken. And that is highly effective. Then also, obviously, when it comes to self-talk, um, I mentioned yeah, how to use them and those type of things as well. Remember, I incorporated one of my previous videos that in terms of self-talk, you could have one word or one phrase that actually has a way bigger meaning to you out there, right? For example, you might be losing concentration as a player. Now, say I'm the goalkeeper losing concentration, that can have rather, rather, rather dangerous um, consequences. Now, in the event of that happening, I could have a key word. For example, say I'm a goalkeeper out there. I could say, Anton, focus. Right now, if that is my keyword, it has a very specific meaning. If I share that amongst my team and are prepared in a team context, my teammates can assist me and even the coach can assist me when I lose concentration to snap back instead of shouting a wall full instruction can actually just use keywords and it has a whole lot of meaning, uh, better meanings out there. And a player tends to absorb it a lot better as well. Now that's very important to consider. And then, other methods for, for the team that is quite important is when it comes to motivation. How I'm going to motivate an individual and how I'm going to motivate a team are going to be very different in many cases. Um, in most, most countries today, we've got players on the field who comes from multiple different cultures. And uh, so when I work with the team, I want to mo motivate in line with a team culture that we are building. When I'm motivating an individual, I'm focusing on the individual's culture. And as a coach, I need to then have that kind of understanding. It's more motivational speaking there than anything else. Right, that's important. And, and, and trying to come to the level of the player and um, relating to the player to be able to help them effectively as well as a coach. Now, remember that in a technical team, not everyone necessarily have the time and or, or the the ability to work with a player in this way, it might not suit your character. And you might not want to change that because of your choice on 
communication that you want to use and or the role that you want as a head coach, for example, then you might need someone in your technical team, maybe the assistant coach, or maybe you've got a sports mental coach and you're fortunate in a position to have one assigned to your technical team. Then you can have that specific sports mental coach have that role of talking to the individuals and communicating with as individuals, becoming the link between the head coach and actual players to build this team more effectively. Now, this, that's very important to understand. That's, it's a, that's a very crucial link between a technical team and the rest of the team members using from individual all the way through to actual team, as you can see as well. Then understanding the need for sports psychology rather than fearing the unknown. Now, the reason I've got this point here is when dealing with professional coaches out there, I've come across many of them who, who tends to have a lot of resistance towards using sports psychology and sports mental coaching and specifically sports mental coaches, part of the technical team. All right. So I believe the main reason that they're fearing that is because they have very little knowledge of that since it seems not to really be covered very well in most coaching courses out there. And uh, I've been to many coaching courses and say I hold a couple of those qualifications myself as well and um, have noticed the absence of sports mental coaching and sports psychology in these courses. So I can't blame a coach for fearing that because he doesn't know it. And coaches tend to fear what they see as an intimidating aspect because they feel like it might actually threaten their position or the player's perspective of their knowledge. And I always challenge uh, coaches on that saying, but when you come out there, you've got a team around you to make you shine. Remember that. Very few people know in the Leicester City team who was the, the sports psychologist there, but everyone remember who was the coach when they won the league. So the coach should not fear that. Um, they are there for a reason. They are there to assist. And by the way, they had a sports psychologist part of the technical team that season. Right. And then we're basically looking at a good example. I like the South African context of got as well, or Pizzo Mosemani. Uh, many people might know him. He is the Mamalodi Sundowns head coach at the moment and has been that for the last uh, probably, what, about five, six seasons now. And um, previously coached South Africa as well. Now, in the case of Pizzo Mosemani, uh, Pizzo Mosemani is... Uh, someone who, who values having a very strong technical team around him that is filled with a lot of professionals and that can basically benefit in that sense as well. So that's why I'm using him as an example here to refer to. But you've got various of those type of coaches around who, who basically fill themselves the technical team that's highly qualified and know even certain aspects that they don't know themselves so that that fills the gaps that they might have in their coaching team. So they understand the value of professionals around them and therefore the value of having sports psychology, sports or rather sports psychologists and sports mental coaches as part of the team as well. As Coach Anton Pitua Limited, we offer a service to teams as well, where we can actually guide them in this and assist the coaches in being able to apply it on the field, but having sessions with us on a regular basis where we can actually guide them to be able to give us feedback on how things are going, and we can give them more input as to what, go, what to go and apply next. This we can do remotely, so we don't need to come in or fly in and out to teams, but can actually do that via meetings like this. The next one is understanding team motivation and how to create it. Now, I mentioned earlier when I referred to communication as well, and. Um, you know, when I refer to a lot of the team building aspects, then how you're going to motivate and or demotivate players are very, very unique and different because of culture differences out there. So you need to try and firstly understand the team culture if you're new to a team, because they might already have a team culture that can assist you in motivating players, especially those who've been with a team for a while. Now, um, when it comes to team motivation to players who are new, and have to become part of the team, I rather don't believe in hostile circumstances. And um, I'll use an example. One of the, the famous players out there, Rio Ferdinand, who was retired a, few, uh, a while back, not too long ago, most of you all, all of us know him very well. And um, in some of his interviews, he mentioned that as a player, he was extremely, extremely harsh on teammates um, because he saw them as, if you're not gonna help me win, You've got to either ship up or ship out. And that was literally his attitude. And he, he confessed how he believes that maybe if 
with some of the younger players who had great talent, if he had treated them slightly different, the outcome would have been very different and they might have actually made it more successfully at Manchester United while he was there. Now, that as a coach, you should have seen happening. So if you're a coach at a time when that's happening, you should see these things happening and intervene and actually deal with these young ones and or deal with the players who are putting unnecessary pressure on it as well. So you can have a wall build a team setup where they can actually help each other motivate each other and not just become the coach's role but a coach need to coordinate this and run this process so how do i create a lot of team motivation well i'm mostly going to create it through a lot of team building activities the more people learn to become friends the more they learn to become basically comfortable with each other the more they're going to be motivated to play together and work together as well those moments of conflict, they're going to happen. They're going to happen. And quite frankly, I'd rather have them happen than have them not happen and the players never interact on the field. So this conflict needs to happen sometimes in order to resolve them and then come back with a better understanding and or motivation towards that. So that taken into consideration, remember, team motivation are much more complex and you need to try and understand, as I said, individual culture team culture and an office in environments you are in the type of players from the different environments type of characters you are dealing with and how do i best combine these characters through team building activities to help them build a great team spirit and a motivational impact on each other all right that's basically that for today in, in, in all of those things covered um, you'll be able to to see quite a lot of benefits, I, I hope and I trust. And uh, before I move on from here, I'd like to open up now for a, a Q&A, but um, just in closing for those on the YouTube watching this afterwards, if you've been watching this for the first time, you have found this valuable, please go ahead and like our video and or share our video to as many as possible. At the same time, please go ahead and utilize this in your own material if you wish and get in touch with us if you want professional services as well on our contact details that is listed here either my email address you can also use info at coachanton.co.za or our cell phone number it says 074 we south africa so it's plus two seven seven four one nine four eight two one two plus two seven seven four one nine four eight two one two you can whatsapp us regarding that and we will respond to you as efficiently as possible and hopefully we could be of great service to you and or you can spread this and utilize this to your own benefit as well thank you very much for watching and please note there's many videos like this to follow and each of these points to mention today will be broken down into small individual uh, videos as well as part of the 50 video se series that we are busy with that's it from my side i'm coach anton from coach anton p2 unlimited 